Yo, what is up, Radar Force? It's Dragon Radar here with another Dragon Ball Super video. Today, I will be listing five similarities that Dragon Ball Super has done that GT did as well. So without further ado, here's our number five on our list. Booyah! At number five on our list, we have a new transformation. In Dragon Ball GT, of course, they made Goku go Super Saiyan 4. And in Dragon Ball Super, they made Goku go Super Saiyan God. Even though they may not look the same, you can arguably say they're around the same strength. But I would still say Super Saiyan God would be stronger than Super Saiyan 4 just because of the scenarios that I've seen in Super. Which brings up a very interesting point. If Super does continue after the ending of Dragon Ball Z, how will they compensate for the power scaling compared to Super Saiyan 4 and Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue, or whatever transformation Dragon Ball Super decides to end off with, I I'm curious to know how they will combine the two, or not combine the two, but compare the two, or will they just completely dump GT out of the way, or will they actually try to add it in there somehow? That's going to be interesting when it gets to that point, and I'm really excited to it. At number four on our list, we have the introduction of bringing Android 17 back into the anime, we know that GT had a saga called Super 17, where a 17 in Hell and 17 on Earth came back, combined, fused, and became super strong and pretty much a freaking crazy strong enemy. But, Dragon Ball Super brought in Android 17, which he's good in Super because he's coming back in the Universal Survival Arc tournament to help Goku and everybody win, or potentially try to win, Universe Tournament, which is awesome. I like the fact they brought it back, and I totally think Super will do an amazing job at bringing 17 back compared to how GT brought 17 back. And that brings us to our number three spot on our list. At number three, we have Exploring the Universe. We know that Dragon Ball Super is revolved around the universes. They have 12 universes, I believe, in total. I don't watch subtitles uh, of Dragon Ball Super, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's 12. Uh, but in GT, they didn't go through 12 universes. They went out through their whole universe, basically. Uh, Goku, Pan, and Trunks, the whole, pretty much three quarters of GT was out in space traveling. Trying to find the Black Star Dragon Balls and whatever happened along the journey, you know. It was kind of uh, boring. Now... Super is doing a fabulous job of bringing all the universes together, or not together, but bringing them in a great storyline that's interesting and fun. So props to Super, they're doing a great job. And this topic brings me to our number two spot. On our number two spot, we have the introduction to different types of Dragon Balls. In Dragon Ball GT, we know that they introduced the Black Star Dragon Balls, and then Super we know they introduced the Super Dragon Balls. Obviously, Dragon Ball Super. In Dragon Ball GT, the Black Star Dragon Balls were used by Emperor Pilaf, and he wished for Goku to be a kid. And the consequences to the Black Star Dragon Balls are that they are scattered across the whole universe. Universe 7, huh. Uh, and you have a year, I believe, to get them back. If you don't, the Earth will be destroyed. I don't understand that. It's kind of lame. But, you know, it was GT. And in Dragon Ball Super, they have the Super Dragon Balls. I don't watch Super in subtitles, so I have no clue what they do. And I don't want to know. But you guys probably know, so it doesn't matter. I assume once you wish for them, it takes a year to get them back again. I don't know. And I don't want to find out, because I don't want to spoil the show for me. And this brings me to our number one spot. This might not be the most interesting for you, but I personally think it's my favorite. But in Dragon Ball GT, they actually brought Emperor Pilaf back into the anime. From this point on, Emperor Pilaf hasn't been seen since Dragon Ball. He was never in Dragon Ball Z, to my knowledge. He might have been shown once, but I don't think he was. Uh, and then Dragon Ball Super, or Battle of Gods, Resurrection F, Pilaf was one of the main antagonists. And the reason I put this as number one is because the similarities are so close together. In Dragon Ball GT, the first person you see to bring up a problem is Emperor Pilaf. And in Dragon Ball Super, 
Emperor Pigalov is one of the first to cause a problem, such as in Resurrection F, he helped the remaining Frieza Force members revive Frieza. And I love how they did this. I love how they did it. It's almost like they're redoing GT in a better way. But there's no proof of that yet. But there are so many similarities that you could potentially say are the same thing, such as these five that I listed. It's just crazy how there are this many similarities that GT did, that Super did, that could basically mean the same thing, just in a different context that makes it better. But that, that wraps this video up. Those are my five similarities that I could think of. There might There's probably way more. I just need to sit down and think very deep. But that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. And feel free to join our Discord. We have a small group in there. We talk, I talk to everybody, me and my squad, our squad, the Radar Force members. Uh, remember to hit that bell to be notified of every video I post. And until we meet again, guys, peace out, guys. Take care. See ya.